So we are going to do the 2016 AMC 12B problem 14. The sum of an infinite geometric series is a positive number s, and the second term in the series is 1. What is the smallest possible value of s? Now in order to think about this problem a little better, let's take a look at what exactly an infinite geometric series is. To do that, we can see what our sum s would be equal to. We know for a geometric series, we're going to have a first term a, and then every term after that is going to be multiplied by a common ratio r. So we have a plus a r, plus a r squared, plus a r cubed, and so on to infinity. And this is going to converge to a finite value s. We also know a formula for what a geometric series is equal to. An infinite geometric series is always going to have a sum s being equal to a, over 1 minus r, where a is that first term and r is the common ratio. So we know this is going to be the value of s. This is what we're trying to minimize. Now we want to take a look at this condition about the second term. We know that the second term in our series is a r, this one right here, and it is equal to 1. So that means we have an additional piece of information that a r is equal to 1. What we have now are two equations for two variables, a and r. So we could choose to isolate either a or r in the equation a over 1 minus r, because we're trying to minimize that sum. So the question is, should we isolate a or should we isolate r? Well, let's try both of them and see what happens. First of all, we could let r equal 1 over a, just solving for r in this equation here. And then we have that s is equal to a on the top, and then divided by 1 minus r equals 1 over a. And if we multiply the top and bottom by a here, we get a squared over a minus 1. And some people might know a way to minimize this fairly easily, but for me this is a little bit confusing kind of function. I don't really know what to do immediately with this. So maybe we should try the alternate route. Instead of solving for r in terms of a, let's try solving for a in terms of r. If we do that, we get that a is equal to 1 over r. And if we plug this in, we get a different result. a is 1 over r on the top, divided by 1 minus r. We can bring this r all the way to the denominator here, and that will give us that s equals 1 over r times 1 minus r. And this is actually a lot easier to work with, because we see on the bottom this is a quadratic, and it's pretty easy to figure out how to maximize or minimize quadratics. Now in this case, because the quadratic's on the denominator, our goal is to make it as big as possible, because if a big number is on the bottom, then that's going to make the whole number smaller. Now you could try to solve this by completing the square, and that would work as well, but I'm going to do it using graphing. If we have r on a horizontal axis, and r times 1 minus r on the vertical, what we're going to have is that this function equals 0 when r equals 0, and it also equals 0 when r equals 1. And it's going to have a parabola that goes up and then down, just like that. Because we have r times negative r being a minus r squared, our parabola is going to go downward. When we take a look at this, notice our vertex is going to show up right in the middle of that parabola at 1 half. So the biggest value of r times 1 minus r is going to be when r is 1 half. And we can go over here and plug this in we know that the smallest value of our s is going to be when we have the biggest value of this thing on the bottom. So we have 1 over 1 half times 1 minus 1 half. This is going to be 1 over 1 half times 1 minus a half is just a half. Therefore, we have 1 over 1 fourth, which equals 4. So 4 is going to be the minimum possible value for our s. Now the lesson to take away from this problem is that sometimes a method seems to not work initially or to produce some difficulties, but we can actually simplify the problem and get to a better answer if we start out by making a minor tweak in the way that we approach it from the beginning. So if we had solved instead in terms of a, then finding the minimum would have been a lot more difficult. But by just changing that one thing of solving to r instead, our life becomes a lot easier and we can get to the answer just like this.